What's up, dude? Cooch, back with another one out here on the M104, riding some more, dude. This thing I'm telling you is become just an absolute addiction for me, man. Like extreme M104 mini electric unicycling is my new thing. I'm all into it. I don't know why. It's ridiculous. You can see me crash twice in this video. I mean, absolutely bust ass twice in this video. And I still love it. Even though I busted ass twice and it was totally, you know, it could have been avoided by having a, a bigger electric unicycle, having suspension, yada yada. This thing, I don't know what it is, guys. I, I don't know what to tell you about it. it, it dude, and for a thousand dollars, man, I, I'm having a total blast on this thing. I literally cannot believe that something like this exists. Um, to have so much fun on, man. You literally can't even buy a mountain bike. You can't buy a mountain. You can't buy anything uh, that could go on trails like this, and you could you could have this much fun for such a low price of just a thousand bucks for this little thing. I mean, you really can't. And I, I took it out to some mountain bike trails, guys. Like these are some actual blue. Um, like in Colorado, the mountain bike trails are actually legitimately like rated. The Black Diamond mountain bike trails, dude, that I've experienced in Colorado are absolutely miserable. I mean, I, dude, if you saw the Black Diamond mountain bike trails out here, you would look at some of the shit and be like, how is that even possible? Like, I've looked at some of the rock faces and stuff, and dude, I don't know what you would do to get up it. I've literally looked at it just puzzled before, and I've rode the unicycle on some of those Black Diamond trails, but I'll admit, man, you gotta, like, pick the unicycle up and carry it over a lot of, a lot of this stuff on them. I mean... Uh, but other parts of it you can ride fine and see that's the one thing about electric unicycles with trail riding um, That not a lot of people really understand and, and like some people are kind of hesitant on the fact of taking a unicycle electric unicycle even trail riding um, Because they're like well What if you run into an obstacle you can't pass or anything and that's the beauty of these things Especially the M104 man you see how tiny this thing is you just pick it up, man, and, like, you can literally, any obstacle you can walk over on a trail, you can navigate with an electric unicycle, essentially. So, if you're a new rider, I suggest getting out there and trying some trails, because if you get up to any obstacle that intimidates you, worst case scenario, you, you pick up the wheel and walk over it, and then set it down on the other side of it and keep on riding. And so, trail riding is, is I love trail riding, guys, on electric unicycles, and this one... The M104, the reason I'm liking trail riding on this one specifically, you see this. I'm literally getting on the trail and taking off. And this thing is, it eats hills, man. Like, if you're not riding, like, this is a, a pretty steep incline for the M104. And this is just about right where it, it still has enough torque, has enough power to get up it. And, you know, it's a trail and it's a steep incline, but the M104 is absolutely eating it no problem. And that's one thing that a lot of people were concerned about. The M10 is how it, it handles hills. And dudes, if you're rolling into it, like me, and you're keeping your speed up, just, you know, getting through it. See right here, I'm slowing up a little bit. The wheel is he hesitating a little bit. If you keep that momentum, dude, it just, it cruises up hills. No problem at all. Uh, and getting back to what I was saying, like, the reason I love the M10-4 so much for trail riding, I'm thinking, guys, is it offers a lot of... See, <laughs> It's one of my crashes. I'm saying I like it as I crash. But it offers a lot of technicality, dude, that you got to build on. And that right there, I hit that rock behind me. You see the literally the skid mark right there? I hit that rock that's sticking up right there, that razor edge rock in the trail. You see that? And, dudes, I would, honestly, it, it literally is just my fault. I'm riding a small electric unicycle, pushing it to the absolute limit through here. And I hit that rock sticking up out of the trail. And in and, and most case scenarios, guys, if this was a really popular mountain bike trail, someone would have probably, um, you know, taken a pickaxe and, and, uh, and taken that rock out of the trail by now. But because this is high up in the Rocky Mountains, you know, this is a rugged trail, um, that's just, you know, what you got to deal with. And I, I literally, this is the first time I've ever rode this trail before, and that razor edge rock right there, I look far ahead down the trail, guys, and I just must have missed it, man. I literally just must have not seen that as an obstacle and just hit it. But that's just one thing you got to learn with, with the M104. If you're going to be doing stuff like I'm doing with it here with trail riding, guys, what it'll make you do is adapt to that. So, like, that's just a learning thing. So now I'll be looking down the trail and I'll be scanning kind of closer ahead 
uh, to see stuff like that. And, you know, it'll in the end, it'll make me a better rider, guys. And all in all, you know, I could take any other wheel out here and be riding any other wheel on this trail. But I wanted to take the M10-4 and see what I could do with it, you know. And if you wear your gear, guys, you wear your wrist guards, your knee guards, even on a wheel like this, because it's a small wheel, guys. It literally it does not look like something you should be putting on motorcycle gear to ride on. I understand that completely. But if you're going to be trail riding it and stuff, and you, you are in a scenario where you can fall like I just did, Dude, the knee pads, the wrist guards, the helmet, it all helps. Trust me, it really does. You can get right back up and keep riding. Look at, I mean, this thing hauls ass. Look at it, dude. It is literally just ripping. That's 29 miles. That's, I don't know if that was actually 29 miles an hour. That was as all out on the M10-4 right there. Probably, I'd say, 26 to 29 miles an hour in that range right there where you were, where it was just kind of throwing up dirt heading on that little trail. But, guys, I'm telling you what. For a first wheel, for somebody that wants like a novelty electric unicycle, a miniature wheel, or something super affordable, this thing is absolutely a gem. You will have a total freaking blast on it. I mean, and this is a long trail. Like, this was not a long trail. I'd say like a five and a half mile trail. And so I looked at the trail map. I was like, all right, five and a half miles, man. Do a five and a half mile little loop real quick on the M10. And no, that's no problem at all, dudes. I, I actually, I had so much fun doing the loop. I did it twice. I went and did it, I went back and did it the other way. And when I went back the other way, I went way faster, guys. I gotta say, I saved that footage and, dude, I absolutely hauled ass whenever I did the trail the opposite direction. Because I, I knew it and I was used to the wheel and everything. And it, it, this thing has plenty of battery to do that, guys. I'm telling you, like, if you want to go trail ride it and stuff like this, it's almost crazy because it's so lightweight and it's so small, but yet you can still get comfortably, you know, 20, I'd say trail riding like this, man, hard up uphills and everything like this, as hard as I'm riding it, you could probably get 21 miles out of it, riding it this hard on trails and stuff, just because of all the uphills and inclines I'm riding it up, you know? And that's just kind of probably what would drain it much, but little, like this type of stuff right here, does not drain battery much man when you're on like flat trails just cruising along not at top speed you know and the cool thing about this man is you're getting to enjoy scenery you're out in nature having a great time and dudes i would challenge anybody on a one wheel any one wheel rider to race me on this exact loop right here and i, I trust me i've only had i only have like 170 185 190 miles on my m104 now um if if somebody on a one wheel wanted to race me around this exact loop right here, I bet I could beat him on the M104. Just because the M104, just because of the way it rides, like the way it's set up and everything, it has the advantage on the inclines over the one wheel where you don't get that nose diving issue. Um, it, it, sh it it has a huge huge advantage in range and power and speed. Uh, I don't know, and just the way you can navigate it around all the rocks and everything, man. I just think it it can be ridden in a lot more terrains than a one wheel can and it's like the same size and i'm the reason i'm saying that and the reason i've been comparing this thing to a one wheel so freaking much is because man with the one wheels being almost three thousand dollars or whatever or i guess like two thousand three hundred now after all the, the lawsuits they've had and shit man that's awful uh, all that the uh, consumer safety commission trying to shut them down and whatnot but the the crazy thing is this thing's only this wheel literally is like almost one third of the price of a one wheel brand new guys and it has like you know almost twice the range of a one wheel realistically and i think anybody could pick this up and be riding it proficiently or proficiently quicker than somebody that just bought a one wheel and wanted to ride trails and do stuff like this i feel like somebody could learn like if this looks fun to you and you would like to get out in nature or do some riding like this or either just you know ride some e easier trails around where you live at and do some street riding on it i just feel like overall like you, your skills on this thing can get you can get better on this quicker than a one wheel and like i've seen a lot of the one wheel trail riders guys like and i've seen some of the really fast one wheel trail riders and they put in so much time man they put they ride way more 
I would say that a lot of the electric unicycle riders, like a, a lot of the really good one wheel riders, dude, they are always out riding. Like I don't understand, like they must have three different one wheels charged up to do as much riding as, as these people do. And you see them at these races and it will blow your mind at how fast they can ride those one wheels over all that crazy terrain. And it, it's a wheel that's, you know, about the size of this one. So once you're riding an EUC, it's a lot smaller, you know, and about the same diameter wheel as a one wheel. It really makes you um, realize uh, how how good some of those riders are to be just flying down those mountains on those damn things. It's crazy, but I I love the M104, man. I'm I just think it's a stellar little wheel. I just think I mean you got to know what you're buying with this thing. Um, but as a first electric unicycle, um, after riding it so long, I think this is it, man. Like. It's it's perfect. I mean, it's so easy to get on a ride as a first EUC, and then you see this right here. I mean, I'm an advanced rider. I've been riding these things since 2015, and I'm having a, an absolute blast trail riding it. And I mean, this is a trail that, I mean, honestly, you could ride it faster. You could ride it more proficiently on like a V12. You could ride it on like a Master, anything like that. Of course, 100 percent. But they are more expensive. And the whole thing is, guys, I think that, that this thing is just a wildly different experience than those. For example, one of the main reasons I love EUC so much, guys, is because if you think about it, like a lot of the trails and, and stuff like that, a lot of the very fun mountain bike trails and, and different areas um, that you couldn't ever ride a, a dirt bike in or anything like that, that are protected areas and, and whatnot, you can ride an EUC in. And the whole thing is, too, like if you were... A lot of places, like if you go ripping like a master through there or something like that, um, it, it's, I mean, if you're riding a master full sin on a lot of trails, like I know there's a lot of places, man, if I go take it, uh, one of those beat going masters and I'm riding it all out as fast as I can, uh, I'll stir up a lot more shit than I will on an M104, you know, if I'm flying through some trails and everything like that, and, you know, the wrong person sees me going 40 miles an hour on the M10 or on like a, on one of the advanced wheels or something like that or s22 anything like that um yeah it's a little bit more like yo what's that what, what you doing but the m10 is just like dude it's like it, anybody that sees it, it it looks like it shouldn't even be rideable i mean it literally is so tiny this thing doesn't even look like it should be rideable and the fact that you um what makes it so much fun and so thrilling is that it is small and that you are kind of pushing the limits of the thing you know kind of the pushing the limits of the size of the device in comparison to the riding you're doing which makes it more fun if that makes sense that's why like i don't know it's all like a scale type thing you know it you're getting a more fun scale experience um out of this wheel than you would the big ones and stuff like the shit like this happens so that's one thing you got to look out for but like i say um it it does not deter me at all like that literally doesn't make me mad um that's totally my fault not the wheel's fault the wheel is what it is um, but it just has those big ass pedals on it you see those big wide pedals on it in comparison to the size of the wheel those are normal size pedals that you would find on any euc basically but because the wheel is so small the actual place where you put your feet seems ridiculously big and so like when you're riding in like a little trough like that you know how the trails kind of get rutted out and kind of turn into like a little u-shaped trough one thing you got to watch out on all eucs guys is your pedals clipping the sides right there and especially on a wheel like this where you are so close to the ground so a lot of things to keep in mind but i mean this shows dudes if you're if you're not going to be off-roading this thing you can do really any type of ride any type of like normal riding you would on any euc basically um you know your top speed yeah your top speed's limited 29 but dude 29 on this thing is flying like this is this is about 29 right here on it right there on that little back stretch where i'm hitting right there slowing down right here and i like the, the braking on it's great um the handling on it like once you get used to the handling on it guys it is ridiculous how easy this thing is to navigate and twist around and and make it do exactly what you want it to do and i i just i mean i really think it is the perfect starter wheel because you can learn everything you need to learn on it and everything you learn on it is so easy but transfers perfectly to any other euc you ever buy so it's all kind of early learning skills 
and then you know you get this thing for a thousand bucks it is a total blast uh, the durability of it's great guys I you've seen you've seen how hard I ride my wheels dudes I'm not lying the durability of this thing is incredible because I mean I've crashed it many times I've been very hard on this thing and it is there's I mean the whole thing is metal like un, under those side um, panels right there the entire build of this thing is metal and there's no other EUC ever released that is entirely metal like this thing is the whole metal frame of it is is all i mean there's no other euc like that where the entirety of it is metal even the batteries are covered in metal on this thing so it's um it's a little tank guys i mean it, it it's sweet man and i it's definitely not for everybody so i'm not saying that it is for everybody but if you if you're a type of person that can just have fun with something and just kind of push it and see what you can do with it and and, and really enjoy something that's kind of a novelty thing, then go for it, for sure. Or if it's your first wheel. So that's just like two categories. Either somebody that's a seasoned EUC rider that just wants something novelty, got some extra change laying around, or either if it's your first wheel, guys. I'm not. I'm literally saying this is a perfect first wheel. After after riding as much as I have, it is, you can't beat it. I mean, for a thousand bucks, the speed on it, uh, the watt hours you get on it, and the coolness factor of it, man, everybody that sees this is going to want to buy one. But if you do want to buy one, definitely hit the links below, guys, and pick one up because you got to use the links below if you want to get one, guys. Just going to the retailer to get it uh, does nothing for me, you know. So if you've seen the videos uh, that I've been making on these M10s, click the links below uh, to purchase yours, whether it be through the E Wheels link, uh, the Alien Rides, Rev Rides or e-rides link it doesn't matter which link but make sure you just click the link uh to get it and it literally gives me a little kickback at no extra cost to you and keeps me um inspired to keep making these videos and you know af afford to keep going to cool spots and uh, keep getting the gear and the cameras and stuff to make all this content and uh i really appreciate you guys watching and a like goes a long way as well that really helps the youtube algorithm young throw it a like in there that really perpetuates this thing all the way up into the youtube superstar frame so that's really what helps out is the likes um, anyways dudes if y'all enjoy the video throw it a thumbs up m104 is absolutely stellar man i don't think you can beat it it's a it is for a thousand dollars you can't beat it put it that way